in this lecture we will have an overview of project communications management project communications management includes three processes similar to the other knowledge areas it begins with a process of planning which produces a communications management plan it then has an executing process manage communications focusing on carrying out the communications management plan and a monitoring and controlling process monitor communications which focused on checking whether or not project communications are meeting stakeholder communication requirements again project communications management is focused upon the processes of developing a communications management plan gathering and distributing project information according to the communications management plan and checking that you are completing the communications activities in accordance with the plan so project communications are absolutely critical for a smooth and successful running of any project whether you are gathering information or disseminating information in fact you should assume that a project manager will spend 90 percent of his time communicating in different ways in different forms and to different stakeholders of this time spent communicating 50 percent will spend communicating with project team members because they are the most important of the stakeholders there are eight dimensions of communication activities the first one is internal which focus on stakeholders within the project and within the organization external in this focus on external stakeholders such as customers vendors other projects organizations government and the public formal such as reports formal meetings and presentations informal it is general communications activities using emails social media websites and informal ad hoc discussions also hierarchical focus this depend on the position of the stakeholder or group with respect to the project team and that will affect the format and content of the message because it may be upward to senior management stakeholders downward between the team and others who will contribute to the work of the project or horizontal between peers of the project manager or team also one of the dimensions of communication activities may be official such as annual reports and reports to government authorities it may be also unofficial and that represent communications that focus on establishing and maintaining recognition of the project and building relationships between the project team and its stakeholders finally written and oral it may be verbal by words and voice inflections and not verbal by body language and actions because each project is unique the project team will need to tailor the ways that the project communications management processes are applied according to stakeholders whether the stakeholders are internal or external to the organization or both and physical location of the team members communications technology which is available to communicate effectively with the team and the stakeholders also language whether one language or many languages are used and according to knowledge management in the organization after that agile or adaptive environments agile communication management differs slightly from communication management in traditional projects because in agile environments face-to-face -face communication is recognized as the best way to convey information also agile documents are simple and provide information that is only sufficient and agile project teams use the show they don't tell concept they only show the work to communicate progress on a regular basis in the sprint review and meetings on agile projects are as quick as possible and include only people who will add to the meeting and benefit from the meeting
The Blend Communications Management process is the process number 17 in Planning Process Group, number 1 in Communications Management Knowledge Area, and performed periodically throughout the project as needed. It is a planning process that has the communications management plan as its primary output in order to develop a successful communications management plan you will need to gather and analyze information about individual stakeholders and their communication needs in order to be successful plan so let's go over the inputs of this process the first input is project charter it should contain the list of key stakeholders their roles and responsibilities within the organization then project management plan and its main components here are resource management plan which provides guidance on managing resources including human resources on the project the team members and groups identified in this plan will have their communications requirements identified in the communications management plan the second component is stakeholder engagement plan the key stakeholders identified in the project charter have stakeholder management strategies outlined in this plan which should help in creating their communications requirements during this process after that project documents the documents that are used as inputs in this process include requirements documentation and this document include requirements regarding project stakeholder communications and the second one is a stakeholder register this will be updated as a result of this process with the plan for communications with those stakeholders after that enterprise environmental factors and the specific enterprise environmental factors that will be useful as an input into this process are stakeholder risk thresholds personal administration policies organizational culture and political climate or any enterprise environmental factors that may affect in working out the communications management plan after that organizational process assets and the specific organizational process assets that may be an important input into this process include any lessons learned and historical information about successful or unsuccessful communications from past projects and any blank templates or guidelines or organization policies and the procedures for the preparation of the communications management plan the tools and the techniques used for creating a communications management plan the first tool that we have in this process is expert judgment and experts must have the specialized knowledge in working out an effective communication management plan for the project the second tool and technique is communications requirements analysis and the purpose of communications requirements analysis is to obtain a detailed description of individual stakeholders and their communications needs so you can then plan how you will achieve them and in order to appreciate the number of potential communications channels that can exist as part of identifying stakeholders on a project you can use a formula that shows the exponential growth and the total number of potential communications channels with every additional stakeholder that is identified the formula is n multiplied n minus 1 divided by 2 where n equals the number of stakeholders including yourself as a project manager for example if you have five stakeholders in your project including yourself as a project manager you would have 10 potential communications channels as shown in this figure after that communication technology the choice of communications technology will depend on several different factors including urgency the availability of specific forms of technology the ease of use of that technology the project environment and whether the project team members and stakeholders are able to communicate face to face or virtually by using technology and the sensitivity and confidentiality of information all of these factors will influence which technologies you choose to use and favor in your communications management plan
Keep in mind that it is becoming increasingly common to rely on virtual forms of technology, but nothing is as good as face-to-face -face communication. After that, communication models. Having an awareness of a communications model which outlines how communications can work is an important skill for a project manager to have because communications is not just a simple matter of your deciding which information you want to communicate and assuming that Zeus you want to communicate with will understand what you are actually trying to say and according to the shown communication model there is a continual looping process in action the sender encodes a message according to his own preferences and the sender then transmits this message via whichever communications technology or medium that he has selected to use as the message is transmitted it must pass through a particular medium and in doing so it will encounter noise in this instance noise doesn't always relate just to acoustic noise but also includes any other aspects present in the selected medium that may interfere with or change the message being transmitted. It can include the physical environment, cultural differences, and accents. The receiver then receives the message and decodes it according to his own preferences. If the receiver then attempts to send the message on to another person, or back to the original sender, it must go through the same obstacles again. And you can begin to recognize how errors in communication can happen very easily, even with the best of intent. It is absolutely important that project managers recognize the challenges to effective communication and to try to minimize the potential disruption to the messages they are trying to send. After that, communication methods there are three broad categories of the types of communications methods that you can employ. The first one is interactive communication where all parties in the communications conduct a multi-directional exchange of information concurrently. The most common examples of interactive communication include team meetings, phone calls and video conferencing. The second category is Bosch communication. It is a form of communication that is sent to recipients as planned and includes email messages, reports, memos, press releases, and letters. The third one is poll communications. It is used when recipients can choose to access information at their own discretion. And common examples of poll communication include internet sites and e-learning sites. In addition to these categories of communications, there are also different ways in which the communications can be delivered. This can be formal or informal and verbal or written. After that, interpersonal and team skills. It includes communication styles assessment. It includes three techniques. The first one is communication styles assessment. It basically is an analysis of the preferred communication method for stakeholders which allows you to tailor your communication to their needs more effectively. The second technique is political awareness and the political awareness of the relationships within the organization is very helpful for a project manager to plan communications based on the project environment as well as the organization's political environment. Also, cultural awareness. Knowing the differences between individuals is very helpful for a project manager as he can minimize misunderstandings and the miscommunication that may result from cultural differences within the project's stakeholders. After that, data representation. The data representation technique that may help in this process is a stakeholder engagement assessment matrix. It can help in determining the level of engagement of a stakeholder, whether unaware, resistant, or supportive. You find out where they are at the beginning of the project, and you show what level of engagement you are trying to influence them to be during the course of the project. This level of engagement depends 
on whether they are interested in the project or whether they themselves have influence in the organization. The last tool and the technique in this process is meeting. Meetings are generally a useful way to bring together members of the project team and other stakeholders so that they can contribute to the development of the communications management plan. The plan communications management process has the communications management plan as its primary output similar to the other management plans and the communications management plan provides a guide for completing the communications management activities in the project. Your communications management plan will identify individual stakeholders, what information they require, when they require that information, how they will receive information, from whom the information will be received, and any other issues affecting communications. It may also outline key messages, general communication strategies, how you will review and update the plan, and an overview of the intended outcomes from the communications management plan. Remember that the communications management plan is a subsidiary of the project management plan and is used as an input into the other two communications management processes. The second output is project management plan updates. As a result of this process, the stakeholder management plan may be updated with the types of information to be communicated to the various stakeholders. And the third output is project documents updates. The specific project documents that may be updated as a result of this process are the project schedule and stakeholder register. The Managed Communications process is the process number 7 in executing the process group, number 2 in communications management knowledge area, and it is performed throughout the project. The Managed Communications process is an executing process that carries out the communications that were planned out in communications management plan. Let's go over the inputs. The first input that we have is project management plan. And the main components that help in this process are a resource management plan, which includes guidelines on communications with any of team resources, can also be an input to this process. Then communications management plan, which gives guidelines on all the processes in communications management, whether it deals with planning, managing, or monitoring the communications on a project. Also, stakeholder management plan, this describes the current engagement level of stakeholders. Do they know about the project? And if so, how supportive are they of the project? And the desired engagement level you would like the stakeholders to be at during the project. And this will determine the frequency and the type of communications you will be sending the stakeholders. The second input is project document. Many of the important events going and during the project are recorded in some of the project documents and as such they will be important inputs into managing the communications regarding those events. The first project document is change log which is the output of perform integrated change control process and this document records both the changes that were accepted and will be implemented on the project as well as those that were rejected Therefore, those stakeholders that are impacted by the change will be communicated to during the course of this process. Also, issue log. As the risk is a potential problem or opportunity, it should be listed on the risk register. But if a negative risk becomes actualized, 
it becomes not a potential problem but a real problem so it should be included in the issue log and those stakeholders that are impacted by the issue and its resolution will be communicated to during the course of this process also lessons learned register in regards to communications any lessons learned about the management of communications during the course of this process will be recorded in the lessons learned register so that they can be applied during the remainder of the project then quality report which is an output of managed quality process it includes the information such as quality issues project and product improvements and process improvements this information may need to be communicated to stakeholders who may take corrective actions in order to achieve the project quality expectations after that risk report and this presents information on the source of overall product risk in addition to summary information on identified individual project risks and this information should be also communicated to risk owners and other impacted stakeholders the last document is a stakeholder register and this is important input for this process as it identifies the individuals and the groups that will need various types of information the third input in this process is work performance reports firstly let's remember the differences between work performance data work performance information and work performance reports work performance data shows the actual work results that were generated in the recent reporting period or at the cutoff date for example the activity of excavation took three days to finish and work performance information is the result of taking the work performance data with the project management plan to see if there is a variance in what was actually done versus what was planned to be done and analyzing the variances found to find their source and if possible suggest a corrective or preventive action then work performance reports which are a specific presentation of work performance information and these reports shared with concerned stakeholders and that is why they are inputs to this communications process and the timely dissemination of work performance reports to the right stakeholders is one of the factors influencing project success also all project reports should be tailored to be suitable to their intended audience then enterprise environmental factors the specific types that will be useful in managing project communications are any personal administration policies especially those that are based on regulations or legal requirements organizational culture and the governance framework communication trends and stakeholder risk thresholds after that organizational process assets that will assist in managing the project communications are any blank templates historical information and the lessons learned and the project specific policies organizational communication requirements and guidelines relating to communications management then the tools and the techniques of this process the first tool and the technique is communication technology we have demonstrated the factors that influence the choice of communications technology in the communications management plan process and the particular type of communication technology you choose to use to facilitate project communication is an important consideration because each stakeholder will respond differently to the technology chosen and it is up to the project manager to ensure that the correct type of communication technology is the selected one to ensure that individual project communication requirements can be met remember that what works well for one stakeholder may not work for another stakeholder after that communications methods your choice of push communications ball communications or interactive communications as a communications method will be dependent on the stakeholder communications requirements 
and we covered these methods in some detail in the plan communications management process. Then communication skills. As a project manager, there are many sets of communication skills you should have, such as communication competence. This is mainly dealing with interactive one-on-one -on -one communication, such as clarity of purpose and key messages, effective relationships, information sharing, and leadership behaviors. Then feedback, which is information about reactions to communications, a deliverable or a situation. And the feedback supports interactive communication between the project manager, team, and all other project stakeholders. For example, in your role as a project manager, you will need to give feedback to your members to correct behavior that doesn't confirm to the ground rules set at the beginning of the project or that addresses a conflict that has arisen between members and so on. Also, nonverbal, which transmit meaning through gestures, tone of voice, and facial expressions. Also, presentations, which is the formal delivery of information or documentation, and presentations will be successful when the content take into account the audience, their expectations, and the needs and the objectives of the project and the project team. After that, project management information system, which are ways of managing and distributing your project information to ensure that stakeholders can easily retrieve the information they need in a timely way. It includes the electronic form. Increasingly, management and distribution of project information is handled by electronic means such as websites, web publishing, and internet portals. Then project reporting. Effective project reporting is a key element in ensuring that a project is successful and that stakeholder communication requirements are met. The way in which you collect and report performance information should be in response to how individual stakeholders want to receive that information. And all project reports should be targeted at their intended audience. Project reports also may include simple text reports or they may be more complex reports featuring a lot of narrative and descriptive text, diagrams and tables and the content of a report can be on any relevant element of the project. You may also choose to report certain elements such as cost and schedule to one group of stakeholders while reporting aspects of quality to another group of stakeholders. After that, interpersonal and team skills. There are skills that are used in working one-on-one -on -one with project team members which are interpersonal skills and the project as a whole in meetings which are team skills. The first skill is active listening which involves acknowledging, clarifying and confirming, understanding and removing barriers that adversely affect comprehension. Then conflict management and we demonstrated it in some detail in resource management knowledge area. Cultural awareness, we used this tool in blank communications management process. Meeting management, which is taking steps to ensure meetings meet their intended objectives effectively and efficiently. And to do that, there are some steps that should be used for meeting planning, such as preparing and distributing the agenda, stating the objectives of the meeting, Ensure that the meetings start and finish at the published time. Ensure the appropriate participants are invited and attend. Stay in topic. Manage expectations, issues and conflicts. And finally, record all actions and those who have been allocated the responsibility for completing the action. After that, networking, which is interacting with others to exchange information and develop contacts. The last one is political awareness, 
which assists the project manager in engaging stakeholders appropriately to maintain their support throughout the project. The last tool and the technique is meetings and these are a tool where communication management is vital in order that they be efficient and effective as they support the actions defined in the communication strategy and communications plan. Project communications are the key output from managed communications process and these are mainly reports to stakeholders about the status of the project. They can take many forms based on the communications management plan and you may choose to send the project communications in different formats at different times and frequencies and with different content according to individual stakeholder communication requirements. After that, project management plan updates and the specific components of project management plans that may be updated as a result of this process are communications management plan and stakeholder management plan. After that, project documents updates. Also, the specific types of project documents that may be updated as a result of this process will be issue log, lessons learned register, project schedule, risk register and stakeholder register the last updates are for organizational process assets and the specific organizational process assets that may be updated as a result of this process include any project records used on the project such as memos correspondence minutes of meeting and presentations those shown in meetings or prepared as a result of meetings The monitor communications process is the process number 9 in monitoring and controlling process group, number 3 in communications management knowledge area, and it is performed throughout the project. The monitor communications process is focused on monitoring and controlling the project communications to ensure that they are in accordance with the communications management plan and individual stakeholder communication requirements. The first input to this process is project management plan. Remember, since the whole point of this process is to compare the actual work done with what's in the plan, the project management plan is going to be an important input for this process. The first component is resource management plan which is used to understand the actual project organization and any changes through understanding of rules and responsibilities and the project organization charts. The second one is communications management plan and this indicates the communications that are going out to team members and stakeholders. The third one is the stakeholder engagement plan which identifies the communication strategies that are planned to engage stakeholders based on their level of engagement in the project. The second input is project documents. The project documents that may be used as inputs during this process include issue log because it includes any issues related to stakeholder engagement any issues related to stakeholder engagement will be relevant for this process. Also, lessons learned register. If lessons learned are learned with regards to stakeholder communications, then these will be added to the register to improve effectiveness of communication and the reminder of the project. Also, project communications which includes all forms of communication about project progress and provides information on the communications that have been distributed. After that, work performance data. 
which is the raw information gathered about how well the project is doing in relation to cost, schedule, quality, and any other relevant metrics that are being measured. Then work performance data will be turned into work performance information in the monitor communications process, and this work performance information in turn will be turned into work performance reports in the monitor and control project work process in integration knowledge area. Remember that work performance data is an output of direct and managed project work process. After that, enterprise environmental factors and the specific types here are any organizational culture and governance framework established communication channels, tools, and systems. After that, organizational process assets. The specific organizational process assets that will be of use in the monitor communications process are any corporate policies and the procedures for social media, standardized guidelines for exchange, storage, and retrieval of information historical information and lessons learned from previous similar projects. The first tool and technique in this process is expert judgment and the use of expert judgment in monitoring communications is a valuable tool because it makes available to use the experience and the skills of groups or individuals within the project team or within the wider group of project stakeholders or those of external consultants or subject matter experts. It is often important to bring in people external to the project who can bring a sense of objectivity to how well the communications on the project are being monitored and controlled and how effective and appropriate they are. After that, project management information system which provides a set of standard tools for the project manager to capture, store, and distribute information to internal and external stakeholders with information they need according to the communications plan. After that, data representation. The stakeholder engagement assessment matrix is an output of plan stakeholder engagement process and it charts the current engagement level for each stakeholder and the desired stakeholder engagement level and it is useful for monitoring the progress in moving between the current and the desired level. After that interpersonal and the team skills, there are two sources for information related to this process of monitoring and controlling communications. Dialogue and conversation with the project team to determine the most appropriate way to update and communicate project performance and responding to requests from stakeholders. And that enables the project manager to identify issues within the team, conflicts between people or individual performance issues. After that meetings, the monitor communications process is a monitoring and controlling process and as such requires careful attention. One of the better ways of giving it the attention that it deserves is through the use of meetings as a tool where the project team is able to discuss progress with project communications and make decisions on any improvements. The first output of this process is work performance information, which is work performance data that has been organized and summarized in a way that can be used for work performance reports. And work performance information typically organizes raw data and reports on project status in relation to schedule and cost progress on the project. Remember that work performance information is used as an input into the monitor and the control project work process. The second output is a change request. As a result of carrying out any monitoring and controlling process, including the monitor communications process, you may come across variations between what you plan to do in the communications management plan and what is actually occurring.
You may also come across situations for which corrective or preventive actions are required to ensure that you stay on track. The best way to ensure that any variations or preventive or corrective actions are captured is through a change request and change requests will go on to process according to your approved change control process and the perform integrated change control process. After that project management plan updates, this process may result in changes to the project management plan, in particular communications management plan and stakeholder management plan. Also for project documents, the specific project documents that may be updated include issue log, lessons learned register and stakeholder register.